And we're not going to see that again. What we're going to see is lots of creep spread, lots of upgrades. We're going to see um, more solid late game play, except for the fact that he's pretty low on the drone count. If I look, he's only at, he's only at 44 drones versus 53 probes. I didn't notice this, and he's also down by 20 supply. Toll has been macroing really well, and it shows in the supply count and in the work account. And also, you know what, that confirms my suspicions from before. Those units that came out were, were not to be offensive, they were actually to be defensive. So this aggression uh, seems to force out some some units from pretty much every Zerg player that uh, that Toll plays, and it makes me wonder if, if maybe if you were playing more a more experienced Zerg player, or, or a, a different Zerg player who doesn't you know overreact or react in this way. Because I don't want to say overreacting, maybe... Um, Errol had a plan, or maybe he just was really worried. People do that, tend to do that a lot. I do that a lot. Everyone who plays does that from time to time. But he's almost saturated now, and he surpassed his opponent in workers by six at this point in time. But this is a strong army. He's almost doubled the army count. This is this is what happens when you make units and then try to make drones and then try to make units. Um, this. And the force fields are pretty good. I don't know exactly what they're zoning out. The units from Nero aren't actually pushing it at this moment. And he's going to lose one queen. A second queen is just barely going to escape, but I'll have it out for it. I feel like Toll isn't doing this attack as well as he could, but he's still succeeding rather well. He has such an advantage going in. These two lings being annoying back in the third base of Toll. But uh, these three spine crawlers are gonna prevent Toll from doing any further damage. But and because of that, Nero needs to stay the hell away from those units. Those force fields are dangerous, and he has plus one attack. Well, the roaches and hydras have plus one plus one. I didn't even notice the hydras. The creep spread's getting pretty crazy too. But I don't think it's really gonna matter. The first colossus is already out. A void ray has started. These poor stalkers are gonna die. But the third base is down, and there have been drones lost, there were casualties. Not that many, but still, with nowhere to mine, it doesn't matter how many drones you have. The third base is being retaken, but the third base from Toll is already saturated. I don't know what the, what the next play that Nero should make is. Um, perhaps more drones, but I think his only option really is to spread his creep, wait for his third to finish, resaturate, and tech to something that his opponent... that is going to try and uh, counter his opponent's in which is looking to just be Colossus, Void Ray, with the gateway units as well. He's not going for any kind of Templar composition, at least it doesn't seem that way, and I'm, I'm correct, there is no Templar archives? There is no Templar archives on the way, so... Actually, that's also bad, because one, 1 is the best that people is going to be able to achieve for the time being, but he's really far ahead, and He's got the Zealot on the right-hand side. He's going to see the, the fourth. And then he's going to hopefully see the third for him, too. And he's going to be able to harass on both sides. He's got to do something about this, though. If his opponent's successfully able to double expand, there's going to be problems. Uh, Zerg on four bases versus a three-base Protoss, which is now going to become a four-base Protoss. So this is another way to play the matchup, too, I guess. Um, usually what you're capable of doing with Protoss player is... Striking with the Zealot Rumbies on one side, using your army with the force fields on the other side, trying to create a more narrow choke and section off. Um, they look at the Hallucinated Phoenix, goes straight out, it goes out, and it's going to see the third. And he's going to realize what's going on, he, and he's going to know that he's going to have to either uh, do what he's doing now, and stick with it, or he's going to have to make an attack. I don't know if he should do both. That leaves him kind of vulnerable to a run by on the fourth. But, um, so yeah, what I was saying is that the other thing he can do is take a fourth to match the fourth of his opponent, which is going to be great for him. Four base versus four base, that's that's still good for Protoss, but it, it, it's, it gives the Zerg player a chance to get back in. And yeah, look, he's doing the Zealot run by over here, he's, he's distracting the main army of of Nero, and also at the same time moving in the, the, the would-be fourth of his opponent. The army value is almost 2,000 higher for our Protoss player here. And, and, um... Oh, but there are Vipers! And there's the Ducks! All three Colossus immediately go down. That changes everything. 
the oh, and the recall doesn't actually get all the units. And there is no blink on these stalkers. They are not going to live. That was a beautiful move by our Zerg player. He was the fourth base, but it was just buying time for those Vipers. And now he's going to make a massive counterattack. And the probes are pulled. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. I think it was. But there is no AoE here for our Protoss player. He's going to have to hope the Void Rays are as good as Alicia makes them look to be. There's an engagement here. Units are rapidly being lost. And I don't know who's coming out on top. It looks like it's going to be a rather even trade. Stalker's going down, but so are the units from our Zerg player. Colossus, are, Colossus in the back on the high ground. But, oh, there's no detection. The, the Zerg player can't see up the high ground. He needs to move the Stalker back. He needs to micro back. And the Zerg player needs to bring an Overseer. That Colossus can just rain hell down. He micros it back. He attacks. Good micro from our Protoss player, but I think it's too late. Our Zerg player has done phenomenal, phenomenal amounts of damage. And look, this this Viper, he is the key. He sees it. Oh, and our Zerg player goes for the fourth base of our Protoss player's fall. So now it's even bases again. Brilliant moves here coming out from Neros. He knows what he's got to do, and he's going to do it. He's way ahead in the upgrades, too. 2-2 two, 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 uh, one, one at the time for the time being, but it's going to become 2-1. Oh, a blinding cloud on the high ground. That's genius as well. He didn't go for the abduct. He didn't risk his losing his vipers. All he did was he made it so the stalkers couldn't defend the, the front wall. And he's going to do it again, too, as soon as he gets the opportunity. These horses and hydras are tearing through that third base. And I can't stress how important it is that Toll has a third base. And the Colossus come onto the low ground. I think that this is going to be the end for Toll. He is down by 3,000 army value. And he's microing back, he's blinking back, but the Zerg is now in the natural of, or in the main and natural of our opponent, but Toll has his run by. It's two base to two base, but slowly becoming two base to one base. The army value just looks to be insurmountable from our, from our Zerg player. What would work right now is if he had one Dark Templar, but it's not going to be enough.
See? 